Hey guys, Wolfie here with a special presentation for the city of Final Fantasy Opera Omni on Global for the last Sunday in July 2020. And this is upon the recording of the video. So with this particular video, it's gonna be a bit of a fun topic. It is to be it's me kind of ranking the reworks that were present on the global side of the game at some point during the July calendar. Meaning that anything from Kafka's rework to Quistus's rework. So anything that came about in the, in the calendar is fair game. Now I will also include Kane's second rework in this particular video as well. Because his second rework came to Global Early for the second straight year. And me personally, I love it because Kane's my dude from 4. But... To be completely fair here, it's going to be who got the best rework, who got the worst rework, and will, would a potential second rework I'll do the best. Now, with each of these picks, there's going to be the overall pick and an honorable mention in as well. So, meaning that for the best rework, there's going to be the best overall and the honorable mention. For the worst, there's the obvious, the overall pick and the honorable mention. And the potential to outdo the best is the overall plus the honorable mention. So, with that all out of the way, like I said, this is my opinion, my opinion only. And I'm going to go over the list of the candidates for this particular video. So, it is, again, this we got Kefka for Final Fantasy VI. His rework came at some point during the July calendar. You also have Afmo. Her rework came during the July calendar. You also have Garnett. Her, Garnett, her rework came. You also have Kane. His second rework was a surprise that he is included. Kane for Final Fantasy Type-0. Her rework is included in the mix. You also have Radio for Final Fantasy IV. Her rework is included in the mix. You also have Raijin Saz. They're included as well. And you also have Quistus for Final Fantasy VIII, the most recent rework. She will be included in this list. So, it's pretty much the list of the units I know who got their rework either early or on schedule. So, with all of that now out of the way, I'm going to meet you guys at the home screen. So, that way, I can gather some thoughts on the matter. So, I will be back. Okay, so, um, I am back. Like I said, um, when it comes down to the best rework, who I'm going to be picking, like I said, it's the overall note, meaning that not just offense, not just support, or whatever, so it's the overall note. And like I said, that's going to come with an honorable mention, and why I feel it's good enough, but not as good as the overall note. That's going to be for the best, the worst, and the potential to outdo the best for the second rework. So, I'm going to do this evenly. I'm going to be pausing this video quite a bit, so that way... You guys get to see what's going on. So, I'll be right back once I get to the honorable mention for the best rework. And here we are. This is my pick for the honorable mention in the best rework. It is Saz for Final Fantasy XIII. The reason why I like his rework a lot is because he can save the party from, you know, being break broken in sense of... If he, his turn goes up before the enemy, but the enemy is targeting, let's pretend here, Zack. Or, if the person the enemy is targeting is, let's say your DPS, you could name, you could name any, like, Aranea or even Kais, Radia, whoever. Put, insert the name of your favorite DPS. And Saz is the turn going up before the enemy. And the enemy who, the person that the enemy is targeting has very little bravery, so. The thing is with Saz is that he can save your teammates in really st st some sticky situations, if you will. Meaning that you can whip out the skill too and you're good to go. He also has more ways to pump out the offense. And that I particularly enjoy with Saz. And... I do wish that his, he has more ways to deal AoE type damage. However, I mean, that could be with his L, future LD. We do know that he does get his 8080 Awakening in the future. For global, that is. Because it's just it just got confirmed on JP, so. But again, he is an honorable mention because he's got 
quite a solid rework in my personal opinion. However, there are things they could have done, you know, in my personal opinion, that would have made him a little bit better, but you never know. We'll have to wait and see until the LD shows up at some point in both JP and later on Global. So, I'll be back with my pick for the overall best rework for the month of July. And this is the winner of the best rework for the month of July. I don't have her EX. It is Garnett. The reason why I pick her as the best overall um, rework for the month of July is just that... For so, I mean, I am anti, I, I am as anti-meta as they come, and I'm not a big fan of Garnet personally, but I have to admit that her rework is really freaking good. I mean, part, and this is partially, one could partially argue that the animation may have something to do with it, but that's not the case for me. For me, it's just like, she has ways to, you know... Help the party when it's needed the most. She was given a slight Yashtola treatment, if you will. Like, Yashtola slash Lena, because with Lena, when Lena got her, uh, when you get her Lena's EX weapon, you know, at a certain point, after you realize it, you get a free skill use at the beginning. And it doesn't go against your turn count. So, she's got a bit of that. And the whole thing with the Yashtola thing is that if she is at least half, she could survive the fatal blow. So I like the fact that, you know, her rework is really freaking solid. And way better than Sauce because she, um, yeah, her healing is solid. And the fact that she got the Gestola treatment with avoiding fatal damage, providing that the HP is at least at half, that just sold it to me. The only thing that I still don't get with units like Garnet is that she is tied down to an element. And in Garnet's case, it's two elements. Meaning that you have to be careful with what fights you put her in. Meaning that if they absorb certain elements, you have no choice but to bench her. So, with that out of the way, I'm, I'm, I will be back with my pick for the honorable mention for the worst rework. And here I am back again with my pick for the honorable mention of the worst rework for the month of July, which is Cater from Final Fantasy Type-0. Now, the main reason why I have her here as, as just the honorable mention for the worst rework is the timing on the global end. She wasn't given enough time to shine with her rework on the global end, and even with that, she's more of a me, 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 me type of unit, meaning that she could be seen as one who works best by herself, running things solo. But the biggest problem, even with all that, is that she's a part of the Cursed Six. Meaning that you need three pairs of certain passes for Cater to be really good. Now, the thing is, what kind of bugs me with her rework is that certain aspects of it, you already have units who could do certain aspects of Kaner post rework a lot better. And you can probably enter Celeste into the equation who is a little bit better with a provoking aspect than Kaner. And this is kind of sad, and it's something I have to but it's something I have to say. I mean Kaner does need a second rework, but not so much as the my as the pick for my pick for the overall worst rework. And the thing is with Kater is to say I, I think she's one of those units who is still very reliant on the three copies of certain passives. She's super reliant and that kind of turns me off from her. So, but that's that on that. And like I said, I'll pause the video and I, you guys will see my pick for the overall worst rework for the month of July. Now, this is my pick. For the one who got the worst rework in the month of July, it is Quistus from Final Fantasy VIII. Now, I'll have, I do have a bit of a confession to make here is that I saw her rework on the JP and the uh, YouTube when it came out sometime last year. And the very first thing I was doing when I saw her rework, I was scratching my head. I was trying to think of coherent sentences because... 
her rework could have been better. I mean, the only good thing about Christmas's rework, in my personal opinion, is that, in all honesty, the battery aspect. But it's the only good thing about it, is that, is that she's a bit better battery, and you don't have to worry about skill 1 as much as you used to. You don't have to rely on skill 2 as much, but she's one of those units who needed a better rework. And she is one of those units who I have on my little list of units who desperately need a second rework. She, alongside a couple of other units such as Terra and Tinas, those all need a second rework pretty bad. And the thing is, with the timing of Quistus' rework on Global, it is far too late. Because you have Aranea on Global, she's pretty much permanent bitch Quistus at this point. You have Leo... He's out and about, he's got a delay style that is quite top-notch. And then you have Gishola, who, the way her turn delay works is that it may not have the duration at, like, Leo and Aranea, but she has a calling card, a.k.a. the EX ability. In Gishola's case, it is Pulse of Life because she gets one use of skill 1 and one use of skill 2 back. Meaning that she kind of out, even Yashola's turn delay gimmick even outdoes Quistus at this, at this point, and even Lightning. You have quite, you have four units who in some capacity has a turn delay that's a little bit better than Quistus. And the thing is with Lightning, she can do it, she can dictate the, the, the amount of delay. You have Yashola. The EX ability brings the skill use of skill 1 and skill 2 back. Meaning that she can go on and on and on and on forever. You have Leo and Aranea. Their turn delay gimmick. Basically, this is, this is just really bad timing for Questus. Because you have 4 units in some capacity that can do the turn delay better than Questus. And Questus, like I said, desperately needs a second reward. And this is echoed by some people on a Reddit post regarding the rework when it initially showed up on JP. So with that out of the way, I'm gonna do um I'm gonna go back into the list real quickly here. So to change things up a little bit, so we do know that Quistus is the overall worst rework, Garnet is the overall best. Now, what I'm going to be doing here is that when it comes down to the second reworks, would a second rework be able to outdo Garnet? Now, it comes down to those who do not have a second rework already. So that means King, you know, his particular rework that came out during the July calendar is actually his second rework. And he is two for two with a rework coming early. So... With Kane's rework, it's pretty freaking solid as it is because he has more ways to deal AOE damage, although it is splash, it still gets the job done when you need it. And the thing is, with Kane's EX rework, you know, if you get it set up post the realization, he has a turn delay that is actually comparable to some, and it goes after everybody. And that is purely beautiful to see. So, Kane is excluded from this particular part of the video, as is Kefka, and the reason why I'm excluding Kefka is because pretty soon on Global, he will be getting both his LD and Burst Weapons. He gets his kind of early, so it's one of those I really cannot put on there because the type of gear that Kefka is slated to get in the future, and it just doesn't make it as fair. So now, when it comes down to the second rework, could anybody in this list outdo Garnet? Now, I do have two units in particular that could have the capabilities, and I have my reasons why. So, what I'm going to be doing right now is I'm going to pause the video and reveal my pick for the honorable mention who could outdo Garnet with a second rework. And this is my pick for the you know who has the potential to outdo Garnet with the second rework? It is F for Final Fantasy XI. The reason why I have her here is that she got a quite a solid rework. 
I mean, I personally have zero regrets on pitying her EX. Now, the thing is here is that she has a way to heal the party. However, you have to use the EX ability to do so first. Now, if she were to get a second rework, and the second rework involves a, a much quicker way for her to heal the party or to help heal the party, this could quite outdo Garnet in this spot because for Garnet, Garnet at the moment, the way she heals the party is through her EX ability. But, and the, th and the reason why I say AFO as an honorable mention is because, I mean, I just, I mean, I'm not really sure, like, what else they could really do besides give her a better way to heal the party, per se. But the way, she, the, the other way she can outdo Garnet is the fact that, unlike Garnet, Afro is not elemental. She's not stuck to an element. Therefore, you can use her in more situations. And this is probably where Afro is going to get the edge over Garnet with a second rework. So, with that, I'm going to do one... Oh, actually, the second to the last pause, and I will be back with my pick, with the overall, with the overall choice to outdo Garnet with the second. And folks, this is my pick for the uh, candidate most that could outdo Garnet with the second rework. It is Radio for Final Fantasy IV. Now, the thing is with Garnet is that she's stuck with, she is stuck to two, two elements. Thunder and water. Now, the edge that Rydia has over her at the moment is that Rydia is up to one element, meaning that Rydia can be used in a few more situations than Garnet, because the less elements you're tied down to, the better off you actually are. And the thing is with Rydia, her rework is kind of solid. And by this, that she has more ways to imperil the water element, which the thing that Garde has over Rydia at the moment is that she can uh, imperil two elements. But the thing that Rydia kind of has over Garnet right now is that Rydia's EX ability ignores defense. So basically, Rydia can flip the middle finger as she kills her enemy. Although Rydia is pretty much uh, attack, 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 attack. So with a second rework, if Rydia were to get a second rework and she gets the Rose of Treatment, meaning that you pop out the EX and you get a free skill use afterwards, she will have undoubtedly outdo Garnet. And the thing is with Rydia, she can enchant the water element to the party. She can imperil the water element, and she has more than one way to imperil and enchant. And if the thing is, it's a single element, and the reason why I feel Rydia can outdo Garnet the best is the fact that Garnet is tied to a second element. Rydia only has one, meaning that Rydia could be used in more situations than Garnet because Garnet's second element is thunder. And the thing is with Rydia, she has ways to deal AOE damage all day long. So, to do a um, quick recap here, and I'm going to do this right once we get to the home screen. So, when it comes down to the best reworks, Garnet is the obvious topic, Saz is the honorable mention, the worst rework is Quistis, the honorable mention being Cater, and the main, one of the main reasons is that the tidying of Kira's rework, she didn't get enough time on global. Now, if the second rework to come out for some of these units, Rydia, in my personal opinion, has the best chance of outdoing Garnet. And with Afbo being the honorable mention, and the, th the only reason being there is that with Afbo, she's not tied to an element, but she can use another way, to, a better way to heal the party. And a better, and by a better way, you know, do I have to use this to get to that? So with that, the next video I will be filming, it is probably going to be late Monday night, is going to be the, um, the August calendar preview. And the reason why it's going to be kind of late Monday night is because in the last video, and I had a hard time getting part of this out, is that I am going to be relocating soon. I'm looking at a... 
potential new room tomorrow evening, so I'm going to be, I probably won't be able to, you know, be on my phone as much because I do need to be able to be present at the room viewing, so, so there, I do need to be, like, have my phone for that, and like I said, I'm going to be taking, looking at my notes, make sure I have everything ready and prepared. So, with that out of the way, I'm going to get going for right now so I can hopefully I can get some sleep. So, with Wolfie here, signing off, I will catch you all on the next one.